This is a big question. Does everyone need to use a moisturizer? Hey guys, it's Dr. Paul Jared Frank, cosmetic dermatologist here in New York City, and today we're going to take a deep dive into the comment section of the Go to Bed With Me series. One of the most important steps in your nighttime skincare routine is to remove any residue, toxins, or makeup on the skin. You spend a lot of time asleep, hopefully, and you want to make sure the skin could breathe with no residual residue. I think the choice of cleansers really is very personal, like any other aspect of skincare. I think you have to find out and determine whether you have oily skin, dry skin, mixed skin, and then you could really choose appropriately. Obviously, um, creamier, milkier type of cleansers are better for dry skin, um, and you may want foaming cleansers or gel cleansers um, for oily skin. Mm. Gunther the Penguin. Oh my God, yes. She washed her hands before going into skincare. Literally no celebrity has done this in their videos, but this step is crucial because imagine using those dirty hands. Well, I'd like to think that people are gonna clean their hands before they wash their face. It's usually kind of part of the whole process, but yes, uh, clean hands are, come before clean face. Post Malone, Post Malone's on this? All right. That towel rag is making me cringe. Don't wipe it. That's okay, as long as it's a soft towel and it's clean. I mean, I wouldn't scrub your face with it, but it's okay. It's a basic part of a bathroom accoutrement, so use it wisely. And this next comment, I don't need her skincare routine, I need her genes. Well, that may be true, but a dermatologist can't give you that. But you do need a skincare routine that is right for you. All people are not created equal, and not, not everyone is born with great skin skincare routine and the quality of one's skin at birth is like any issue of nature versus nurture. It's really half and half. Um, you, you deal with the things that you're born with and the rest is up to how you treat your skin. When discussing diet to patients, particularly with things like acne or other chronic skin conditions, I always say that diet, nutrition, they certainly affect the skin, but they're not really the cause of the malady. They contribute to it. So if you have a problem, you may want to consider nutritional changes, but like stopping to eat strawberries or eating you know, excessive amounts of meat, they're not really gonna cause your skin concern. So ultimately, um, if you're having problems, find something that works for you, that's when you see a dermatologist. The Kratzky. I thought with cleansing oil, you gently massage it onto dry skin, then wet hands and create an emulsion on the oily skin. Are you supposed to wipe off the oil before emulsifying? This is a very complicated answer. It doesn't have to be that scientific when you're putting on a cleansing oil. Honestly, I don't think it's gonna make that much a difference in the end result of cleansing, whether you put cleansing oil on dry or wet skin. Ah, 2002, micellar water is not a toner. Actually, it could be a little bit of a toner. Micellar water is kind of a fad that's come from Europe particularly from um, the French. And it's a emulsification of oil beads that are found in like a soft type of water. Um, often this is not washed off the face and is applied with something like a cotton swab. If someone's gonna use micellar water, I certainly recommend it for the morning cleanse. I really don't think it's potent enough to remove makeup at the end of the day. I think people are still trying to figure out exactly what toners do. Um, but most commonly, they're used after the cleansing step to remove additional grime or makeup on the face. They are not necessary for everyone, but for that person that feels like they need that extra step of cleansing to get rid of residue, I think toners can be good before serums or other moisturizers. I don't think everyone needs to have a serum in their skincare routine. It really depends if there's something specific that they want to target, whether it be dark spots or um, wrinkles or skin tightening. In essence, it's kind of a combination between a serum and a toner. It tends to be even more lightweight and can have some active ingredients in hydration as almost like a finishing product of your skincare regimen. All right, Michelle D. She kept saying moisturizer at the end there, but the last product she used was a serum. A little funny face there. The healing ointment she used, she only used on her eyes and mouth. Is a serum enough? This really depends. Serums were originally 
created as a form of an active ingredient when you're actually trying to treat something. Using a serum doesn't necessitate using a moisturizer after it if that serum has humectants in it that add additional moisturizer. In our MDNA skincare line that we do with Madonna, um, we have hyaluronic acid as a great hydrating aspect in all of our serums. Uh, Katerian, just a PSA, charcoal in face max cleansers doesn't actually do anything. It's a marketing gimmick like collagen serums. Well, collagen serums is one thing, but there's no question in my mind that charcoal and face masks and cleansers can be beneficial. They are not detoxifying in the way that people are trying to market charcoal in ingestible products, but there's no question that charcoal can have absorptive abilities on removing grit and debris on the skin. I think face masks, particularly sheet masks, are kind of all the rage right now. There's unnecessary controversy. The fact of the matter is, if it serves you and you like it, then use it. It doesn't have to be for everybody. Give it a shot and see what you get. Alfredo Lopez, anti-aging with a J, not an I, means sunblock, vitamin C serum, and no foam to cleanse. I think Alfredo has got it right because really anti-aging is about protection, using antioxidants, cleaning the face, I'm not sure with a foam or not, but you know, anti-aging can be very simple and it's about taking care of your skin, protecting it, and treating what's available to make it better. You know all dermatologists are gonna say the best anti-aging secret is sunscreen. If you actually protect yourself, the damage will never come about in the first place. So what are some of the common active ingredients? Well, the oldest and classic is uh, retinol, which is derivative of Retin-A. We have the alpha and beta hydroxy acids. And over time, we're developing newer products that have peptides in it with the building blocks of collagen, epidermal growth factors, and a lot of other newer type of products that basically improve the regenerative capacity of the skin. Maddie. Everyone getting into skincare, do not use multiple active ingredients at a time. I damaged my skin doing so. My whole face was covered in big dry patches and it would never stay hydrated. And I don't even have a dry skin type. You can always use one active, like a vitamin C in the morning, and then a serum or something with an active ingredient at night. This person is practically a dermatologist and actually has a very good point because you really have to be cautious about the number of actives you're using on the skin. First of all, they can counteract each other and they could also cumulatively cause a lot of irritation and damage. For example, retinol and vitamin C don't mix. Um, vit vitamin C and alpha and beta hydroxy acids could actually counteract each other. So stick with one active serum uh, for your skincare regimen. Taylor Ryan, it's unnecessary to use vitamin C twice a day because your skin can only absorb so much vitamin C every 24 hours. You're essentially wasting product, especially if you're using drunk elephant vitamin C. Their formulation is potent enough that it stays in your skin for up to 72 hours after each application. It also works more efficiently to protect your skin if you use it in your morning routine instead of at night, but that you just don't have to do it, just a tip. Uh, most importantly, I don't think it's necessary to use vitamin C more than once a day because it can be potentially irritating. For products like vitamin C, which can be a potential irritant, I usually tell people to use these products at night. So if you do have any irritation, um, it could be gone by morning and you'll use a moisturizer to help counteract that. Rocchio Robledo. I tried using toothpaste as a spot treatment in the past, but that burned the f out of my skin. That's an interesting comment. Toothpaste probably is not the best treatment for acne. I think it does have kind of like an acidic drying effect, which can be useful, but I think we have more modern products out on the market now than toothpaste. In general, when we give an acne regimen to patients, we don't want them to necessarily put it on the acne spots themselves, because once a pimple comes out, it has to go through its process. But there are specific ingredients like resorcinol, and salicylic acid that you can use for spot treatment. Every function of uh, the skin depends on a water to oil balance, and that's basically what moisturizers are providing. The Mayu Gaja. Whoever said that there's no rule for eye cream, the person is wrong. I used to slather on a lot of eye cream in my younger days, and I can no longer do so because I've become very prone to getting chalazin 
think there's an H in that. I've done two surgeries on my lids because of my eye care routine. Your glands can get blocked if you use too much product on your eyes. Use eye creams by all means, but be careful not to put on too much. This is an interesting comment from a patient who gets chalazians, which is a clogging of glandular duct in the eyelid. I'm not so sure that the frequency of chalazians is due to your particular um, eye care routine. I'm um, certainly you don't want to put on anything too occlusive or thick, but I don't think a lot of the active ingredients and in eye creams out there would do such a thing. There are certain sensitivities and thinness of skin. The skin is a little different around the eyes than it does elsewhere, but the active ingredients and a lot of the type of behaviors that we're going to do to improve the eyes are going to be similar to any other product in the skin. Oily skin is dehydrated skin, so cyst needs a moisturizer. I don't necessarily agree that oily skin is dehydrated skin. Oily skin is a result of excessive sebum content and change in biological activity of the skin as compared to someone who has dehydrated skin, which is pretty much an acquired condition. This is a big question. Does everyone need to use a moisturizer? This also could be a big marketing ploy. If you have oily skin, you don't necessarily need to moisturize it. And if you are well hydrated from the inside out, this is another reason why you may not need a moisturizer. This is from Marcy Marie. If you guys use aloe vera, please make sure you get rid of the latex. It could have bad side effects for some people. Latex can have bad side effects for some people, but not everybody. If you are not latex allergic or sensitive, then there's really no problem with latex in the product. It's a very uh, ubiquitous agent used in medicine. So contrary to popular belief, oils may not be as moisturizing as other types of moisture because oils sit very superficial on the top layers of the skin. They give kind of a shimmer and a glow, but they're not actually penetrating deep enough to give the type of moisture you may need. And oil should be the last to be applied on top of your moisturizer. I think this is true, applying oils after a moisturizer, if you want a little shimmer or shine in the skin, but that may not give the most amount of moisture that you need. Marie L, FYI, that's for your information. Oils are not really helpful to the skin. We all have natural oils on our skin and on our face anyway. Putting all that natural argan oil or other types apparently doesn't really improve your skin at all. Uh, this is yes and no. Oils can be beneficial for people. All moisturizers are basically a balance between oil and water. I think the terminology of natural products in skincare is an important one because we're striving for better, safer products. But unfortunately, the term natural is very much a misnomer. Most things we're trying to do is to defy nature. Nature like having acne or having dry skin. So a natural product doesn't necessarily mean a better product. Isabel, coconut oil is comedogenic. Also, do not use lemon or limes on your face. The acidity is too much. Coconut oil can be comedogenic. If you don't have an acne problem and you like it, I think it's a great product. If you're someone that is very acne prone, you probably shouldn't be putting oil on your skin in the first place, let alone coconut oil. Uh, in terms of using lemons or limes on your face, I would not say that's a great idea either. They are very acidic. People do have, can develop allergies to them. Probably not a good idea. That's it for the comments today. So if there's anything I could leave you with, my one rule is the rule of kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. If you can't understand your own skincare routine, it is not for you. Keep it simple. This has been Derm Reacts. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. Paul Jared Frank, cosmetic dermatologist, and you could find out more about me on social media at Dr. Paul Jared Frank and online at pfrankmd.com. Thanks.